back is the awkward and lovable martial arts super panda Po in Kung Fu Panda 2, which aims to deliver more of the fast-paced martial arts action, tongue-in-cheek humor, and beautifully rendered CG that made the first film a hit. But is this just a paint-by-the-numbers sequel meant to shamelessly make profits, or does Kung Fu Panda 2 deliver? In full disclosure, we are avid Pixar fans which usually lowers our expectations when watching a DreamWorks film. Does Kung Fu Panda 2 have what it takes to win the cynical likes of even us over? DreamWorks does maintain the quality of visuals that set Kung Fu Panda apart from all that came before it in the DreamWorks lineup. Well, the sequel looks great as well, but I wouldn't say that it brings much new to the table or improves upon the fantastic work done in the original or the great work done in How to Train a Dragon. Personally, I did feel like I could just reach out and touch Master Shifu's robe. And we weren't watching the 3D version either because yeah. we boycott that joke. High marks for the graphics for sure. Fight scenes are fun and there's plenty of twists and turns in the final battle scene at the end, but again, there's little here that improves upon the original. Not that a sequel has to improve upon the original, but when your first film has the great Tai Lung escape scene and then that awesome battle on top of the rope bridges thing, you need to show up, you know, if you're gonna make the second film set. I was shrugging. That being said, there's some really fun moments when they reach the Gongbin city. It includes this great scene with this dragon costume that they're going around in. There's a great fight with the wolf played by Danny McBride that has some really fun moments. Still shrugging. Yeah. For me, one of the things that didn't work in the first film was the humor. It just felt like an extended Jack Black monologue, which for some people was enough. It just left me shrugging for real. The sequel, on the other hand, takes a while to get going, but for me, had a lot more funny moments that really made me laugh out loud. My old enemy. Dares. I'm just a naysayer. It didn't really do anything for me. But where the film really worked for me, and I would say improved upon the original, was in the theme. Basically, don't let what happens in your past ruin your future. Which is not necessarily a groundbreaking moral, but I thought they executed it well. First one, the dragon warrior can be anyone. Is really, okay? You know, whatever. Ratatouille. It's Ratatouille. That's what the first one is, but suckier. Then this one, these events were set into motion because of Poe's past. It was his destiny. Yes. Thus undercutting the whole moral so, of the first yes. film. The second one, don't let your past dictate your future. Well, his past is totally dictating all of his future right now. So... No, it's not, it's not saying this. Don't let it dictate your attitude. Don't let... Don't choose to be bitter because what happened in your past. He gives the guy at the end the option to change. He gives him the option. He spares his life, uh, but the guy won't let go of his bitterness. So I, I thought, I mean, it was a little preachy there at the end, but I liked it. I thought it was, it held up for me. So I'll choose the two over one. And I choose Toy Story. Cheater. For our official rating, let's go to our patented emotic condomometer. So I'll go ahead and give it an open mouth smile. Compared to the other crap that's made, it's not that bad. So, smiley face for me. If you see this film and agree or disagree with our takes, as said Film Spotty, you can post your own emoticon in the comments to give you a review. See how easy it is to review a film with the emoticon -ometer. I'm proud of it, personally. As far as sequels go, it could be a lot worse. This is definitely no Jurassic Park 2 or Pirates 3. But also, it's no Born Supremacy or Empire Strikes Back. Agreed. 